We had a question come in from someone to ask about how the stage view works. Uh, and so I'm going to show you how to create a stage view for one. And then I'm going to cut to a clip from the beginner's guide to free show to kind of give you the overview of it. Um, this is more of an intermediate feature, so it's not in depth on the beginner's view, but it's something that, um, or the beginner's guide, but it's something that you want to understand so that you can understand what the capacity and the capabilities of this program are. So first off, stage view is something that is an output. Okay. It's simply an output of free show that is designed to be like a confidence monitor is what you might hear it called in other uh, ministries or events and venues. So if this is a presentation software, it will work for any event, any live event. Sometimes the confidence monitor is monitors on the floor uh, on the stage, or sometimes in the back of the audience. So the speaker on stage is looking straight back and they can see it. Okay. And it could be a monitor or projector, whatever setup you have, but it's designed to give them some confidence to know what they're looking at. So, I've got a stage view here and I've got another one here. This one's called the default. You'll see it down below. I got another one called training stage view. Uh, and then if you want to make a new stage view, you just hit new layout and it starts out as blank. So I'm just going to call this a uh, new stage. And so my new stage view is here and they just go in order of alphabetical order here. And so you want to select from the items on the right, what you think is going to be important for your stage view. And that's going to be decided solely upon the people that are going to be on stage. What does your pastor or your worship leader want to see, right? Most often <clears throat> they're going to want to see the current slide text at the very least. All right. And so my current slide just says we will begin shortly. So it just shows the text as big as it can be. All right. And then you go back to the items and you can say, okay, they may also want to see the next slide text. So you click that and it comes up and I don't have any content in the next slide. So this is completely blank, but you can arrange these to be the size you want by just dragging and moving them around. So I'm just going to move them around with best fits, uh, just like you would like in PowerPoint or something like that. So that's not anything special. You click on it. It's got the little, uh, boundary uh, points on it. You can drag those up and down, make them bigger and smaller. Okay. The next thing you want to understand is you can put different things around it along with titles and things like that. So if you go to the item option, you'll be able to see the style. You can see the bound, the background color. Um, you can see border options. So you can see here, you can set a different color for the border, which is going to be helpful. And so I would say, I like my, my border to be yellow for whatever reason. It can be whatever color you want. It could be white, but I would do that for each of those. So I'll just select this one. I'm already in the item option and I would do the same thing. I would make it yellow or maybe you say, you know what? I want this one to be a red outline uh, because it's the, the next slide and it's important for whatever the reason you might say. Right. And so I'm going to go to the show so you can get an idea of what that would look like. If I go here and let's go here. So we got, a couple of slides here. And so if I go into stage view again, you're going to see two different pieces of content and that one did not keep that border. So if I go back here and I've got a border here, Oh, the width of it is not there. So I need to make the width be equal to that one. So this one, the width is five, select that one. We'll make the width of this one five, but it's red. Okay. Now notice that it's cut off on the side, the red box. So I would just pull it over just a little bit. I would use my arrow. Uh oh, Let's just drag it over the arrow keys. We're going to actually make the slide move uh, or switch slides. All right. And so let's go back into the show and let's go to some scriptures so you can see. And this is just a, um, a meeting that I had. And so this is what it would look like. It shows the translation and the passage big at the top. So your reader is going to be able to see all that, which is great. And then it actually has the passage there below. So that's my two different views that I've added. That might be all the person that's speaking wants to see. Okay. And you can arrange these to be top and bottom. Um, you know, you can make this be at the top and that one be at the bottom and just make them shorter. Right. So you might say, okay, I want this one to fit and be, uh oh, I want it to fit and be wide. And I want this one to fit and be wide as well. And you can drag them as narrow and as wide as you want and just arrange it how you think is best. So I'm gonna put these all on this side and this is the current slide and this is the 
next or upcoming slide, right? And so if you go over here, there's a way in the options to show. Let me see if it's a it's not a right click that will show you the details of each one. So if I go to item, uh, let's go to. I don't want to invert them. Height transform style. No. You can change the corner radius. So let's say you want it to be rounded. That's fine. You can do that here as well. But what I'm looking for is the actual detail. So you can actually have a title with it. So we got auto size. That's on by default for all of those. Uh, align. You can align things to be left and right if you wanted to. I would keep it centered based on the arrangement that I've got here. And let me see here. Background color, show labels. So if I go over to the right next to items, there's an option that says show labels. When you turn that on, what it does is it gives you the description of each slide. So at a glance, the speaker can tell what they're looking at. Okay, so I'll pull that down so that title can show. I'll pull this down into the slide. So it's got to be inside the, the big black box here so they can see what's going on. Okay, and then you've got your labels on there and that's on this slide page on the right and it's got to auto stretch content that's fine and then show labels and it defaults to be in this color you can make it whatever color you want uh, and you can have it be a background or not or whatever um, or whatever color background so you might say I want it to be a white background for my slide I don't recommend that but that's there the idea of a, of a um, confidence monitor is for it to be as discreet as possible because you don't want people that are participants or the audience to be looking back because it's so distracting, trying to pay attention to what's going on behind them. You want this to be as discreet as possible. All right. And then the other thing that's usually helpful on a slide, like on a, on a stage view like this is to have some type of clock timer or something like that. So you might have a countdown timer for the end of the service, right? So I've got a 10 minute or 15 minute countdown. Uh, and then I've got this 7 PM countdown. So let's say I, I, all you do is click on it. I'm keeping on the drag, but you just click on it. And let me pull this back over. I accidentally dragged it. But when you click on whatever item it is you want, it just shows up on the screen. And I just got to make sure I can select it. There we go. So I can grab it. And you can make it smaller. And I'm going to pull this in. And so they can see, okay, this is how much time they have until 7 p.m. And so for you, your service might be at end at 12 p.m. So you can set a timer. And then you must be able to select it from your items that which we got here. So I got a 12 p.m. countdown here. So this one is over 12 because it's after 12 o'clock where I'm at right now. And so it would show up red. Right. So you can set it up to where your timer will turn red once it's done counting down and you can just delete if you don't want that timer. So I can do that. So once it's past their time, it will show up red. All right. And so this is an idea of how to make a stage view like say so you go to your items and you just pick the things you want i think a video countdown if you play videos a lot in your service is helpful because it lets them know uh -oh, i keep dragging the wrong one but it lets them know what time to expect to be able to start speaking when the video is over without even looking at the video they'll be able to hear it in the audience they'll be able to hear it from the stage and from the monitors or whatever with the the, the audio levels and things like that but this gives them an idea. Okay, I got 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever it is until that video is over. And so that could be a video countdown. And then you might just have another clock that's just the regular time. So just they call it the system clock, right? And this just shows what time it is right now. And this is something you will really talk with your leaders about in terms of your ministers, um, about what they want to see on their stage view, because they're the ones that are going to dictate what this is. And it's important to know. Right. And so this is a layout of a stage view that I like personally uh, because it's got everything that I would need as a speaker. It also has uh, the slide content in terms of text and it's easy and discreet. It's easy to see and easy to read. This is one view. This is another one that I made that has a video countdown biggest day. And then I've got one with the system. This one with the system clock a little bit smaller. But if it was me, I would probably make this one a little bit bigger and pull this one to be a little bit smaller. But you can adjust these however you want to. Okay, there's no 
limit to what you can do. The main thing you want to do is you want to communicate with your media, not media, but with your leadership and worship teams and whoever the speaker may be, right? So if it's usually the pastor or the minister of whoever it is, but there's a guest speaker, you might ask them, hey, what is it that you need to see on the um, confidence monitor? On this one, for example, I've got current slide notes. So if there's slide notes that will show up here, things that they want to make sure they don't miss or they don't forget to say, just like you might see in a PowerPoint presentation or something like that, you can have that over here as well. Once you're done creating your stage view, now you've got it. You got to go over into your settings. And so I'm going to go over here to settings and we got outputs and we've got stage. Okay. And if you don't have this, you can just hit add and you can select which is it going to be. Is it going to be a normal output or is it going to be a stage output? Okay. So I got stage and then it asks for the stage layout. And so I've got the default, the new stage, the one I just created or the training view. This is where you would dictate. And so there's my new stage that I just created with all those timers on the right side and the two long slides for current text and next text. Once you determine that, then you would route that to be on whatever screen you've got connected to your computer. And that would be the monitor that's going to show the stage output. All right. And so hopefully that helps you understand how to set it up. I'm going to cut to the next video here that's going to tell you more as an excerpt from my beginner's guide to understanding the stage view as it relates to a couple other things, but mostly it's just going to be about the stage view. You got the show that shows your presentation, the edit, it edits the presentation, and then you've got this other option called stage view. All right, navigating between any of these does not affect your particular output or your show. And so if we go to the stage view, I've got two stage layouts made, right? So uh, I've got one called default and I got another one called training stage view uh, that I use for showing you guys different things. But this is one here. So this is uh, the current slide being shown and then the system clock, uh, the progress of each slide. So there's 10 slides or number, slide number one and then a video countdown. If there was a video, it would show a timer there of that video. My default, is the slide text okay doesn't show any color any no backgrounds just the text of the slide and then i've got slide notes if there were slide notes and then the text of the next slide this is a what they would consider to be like a confidence monitor uh, when you're talking about uh, having this to show for the speaker or the pastor uh, maybe right on stage on the ground you'll see it sometimes or in the back just facing the stage so the people that are in the audience are looking forward all the time but the speaker is always looking back they would see something like this they would show their current slide text and their next slide text and it gives them that confidence to know what to expect of what's next if they're showing scriptures if you're showing they got a slideshow or something like that you can see that and then you can i've got a clock added here just like before you can make all those changes you can add more items uh, by going over here and selecting different outputs. You can select different clocks and timers and things like that if you wanted to and add those into your stage view. This is completely different than what you'll find in uh, like a PowerPoint or even like an OpenLP or some of the other presentations programs. They won't be as robust as what you'll find in free show. Uh, so you can completely customize your stage view. Uh, and you, I've got a preview of it right here.